the RDO project provides packages and CI around OpenStack for the CentOS and other RPM-based platforms. And I have two members of the project here to talk about that. Let's start with introductions. Tell us who you are and uh, a little bit about what you do on the RDO project. Okay, hi, I'm Aiko, uh, number 18 on IRC. I'm uh, working on the uh, release engineering uh, for RDO. So doing the packages, making sure that we are working, integrating with other projects like CentOS. To my yeah. So hi, my name is Javier. Uh, my role in the RDO team is mostly related to uh, maintaining the RDO infrastructure and also the all the uh, tools we use to to build the distribution and to make sure that all the CI jobs are. Tell us about the Queen cycle. What's happened in RDO over the last six months? Okay. A lot of things happened. Uh, among the new feature, we have uh, you see a new project like Tap as a Service, which is a network extension for Neutron. Uh, for Octavia, we have client and uh, UI who have been added. And but a uh, lot of the work, well, we also have Rack uh, Scale des Design Architecture support now, the RDS uh, Lite and RDS Client uh, product. But most of the work uh, happened uh, into um, splitting the Tempest uh, plugins out of the project. So, they, so when you deploy OpenSec and you want to test your new infrastructure, you can do it with up-to-date uh, plugins to Tempest. So it has been driven by another team member that is not here, Konei Chenden. And uh, also we've been working into um, Preparing uh, the next challenge that we might talk about is uh, Python 3 supporting RDO. So maybe Javier has more to say because he's been also working on that on the infra side. So on, on the infra side, the, the main topics of this cycle have been first consolidation and then automation. Uh, we've been consolidating all of our infrastructure into a newly created RDO cloud. So it's been managed by some other colleagues. Uh, so it took us a while to, to bring all services that were scattered around different provider services, small VMs here and there. Uh, and, and now we are trying to and maintain it as, as, as well managed as possible. And also we've been uh, adding more automation tools so that anytime we have to do some repetitive tasks, for example, when, when a new project is created, rather than having to go through different uh, areas in, in different set systems, we we kind of automate everything based on a, on a ch once we have a change in a project, we can uh, start launching a lot of CI jobs that automatically create all the projects and the repositories located in GitHub. So, so that really helped us uh, lower the, the, the entry barrier for, for newcomers because we can just tell them, okay, this is what you need to do, just create this uh, initial change and after that everything will go on its own. What? Do you anticipate it's going to be coming in the in the rocky yeah. cycle that that'll be you know specifically for RDO? Yeah, like I just mentioned, uh, we are preparing uh, switching to Python three, so that's why we're here at the PTG to coordinate with other projects. Uh, one of the things is that uh, we don't have Python three yet in CentOS, but uh, it is something that will happen in the next year, so. Not uh, right away, but uh, soon enough that we need to start working on that. So the primary thing is to provide uh, Python 3 so that upstream gate and also downstream gate in RDO are able to use it so that we can test future on Python 3, detect issues, have projects to port their code if they need to. So uh, that'd be a challenge and probably uh, Rocky would be just during this work is cycle, we just provide the background work to reach that goal. So it would might be a multi-cycle goal. Yeah, actually, yeah. Python 3 is going to be like the big thing during this cycle. It's, we will have to uh, make sure that it works both on CentOS 7 running Python 2, and then we have to prepare some infrastructure based on Fedora mm -hmm. to support Python 3. So we will have to keep both in parallel. And, and at the same time, make sure that, that we not only deliver uh, a nice, lucky uh, release running on Python 2, but also it's Python 3 ready. And, and we make sure that we are ready for the future versions. 
And also it's uh, exciting because it will allow you to bring to set up the foundation for the next way we will ship OpenStack. Uh, we started a triple folks have been trying to build containers based on our RPM. But uh, on the European world, we have uh, this new feature called modularity where you create modules. So you'd be able, for instance, you have uh, clients using, keep using Python 2 and the services you need Python 3, but the services also use Python 3 versions, but they will be all used isolated stacks from the system, is what we call modules, and that's something that is very exciting uh, and we're looking forward to support in the future, but uh, this needs so us to work on the production chain of these packages to be able to spot this new artifact. So this is really, this would be a really painful but exciting cycle that is coming for us. What kind of places are we looking for uh, people to join the project to contribute? I'd say that every help is welcome. Uh, we need people to write documentation, to help with the packaging. Uh, testing is or, or, or already important, and uh, I'd like to mention that we hold uh, for every OpenStack milestone test days. And if you don't know where to start, please uh, uh, shoot out to us uh, on the mailing list on IRC. We'd be happy to help you getting started. And it is really important because if you want to have a solid RDO release, it has to be tested early and often. So. So yeah, probably uh, the areas where we need more help are probably testing and then documentation. It's, it, it, usually us as engineers try to try to write some documentation and yeah, we sometimes do a good job at that. Uh, we, we are lacking a lot of structure and, uh, and thinking and spending time on, okay, this is how we should set up, especially from the, from the user's perspective. Because, because for us at the end, it tends to be very easy. We, we just know how it works. We know where to look for information. But uh, I, I really struggle myself when I when I try to create a whole set of documentation from, from beginning to end, trying to drive people and not make it too, mess, too messy or too technically oriented. So any, any documentation has to be really good. So I'm recording this on Wednesday at ETG, and so it'll be a few days before I actually publish it. Today is officially the, the day for the upstream OpenStack uh, release, the Queen's release. When do we expect RDO packages to be available for this release? I know that's a little bit of a tricky question this time <laughs> around. Well, uh, I'd say that uh, my uh, team uh, member, uh, Alfredo and Yatim, uh, Alfredo is just behind you. <laughs> so, hey, Alfredo, <laughs> and hi to Yatin who uh, stayed in India. Uh, they're working to uh, ship the package today. Most of, uh, most of things are ready, but we cannot tell for sure if it's happening because we can have last minute issues. So, but yeah, we will have them probably either today or this week. So. So hopefully by the time you're actually watching this video, the packages will be available. Yep. We also have the infra, audio uh, infra, which is also a critical piece for the audio product, but also for upstream because what we're producing, which is mainly packages, are consumed upstream for the CI. And I think it's important that uh, people also have on, the CI, on this infra. Uh, Javier is maintaining a project called DeLorean uh, that is used to build continuously packages. So I'd love to see people uh, using that project uh, um, either to build a third party distro based on RDO to, to come to us and tell us, okay, we've been using these pieces of infrastructure and uh, we like it, but and give their feedback, either bad or good, but uh, to help us uh, shaping its future and make it more robust. Um, also, we're looking for, um, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, more user testimonial would be nice. Uh, I know that uh, when I go to meetups, I meet a lot of early users, like uh, earlier this month I was in Brussels for Boston, and it was incredible to see all those early users telling us, 
you're doing awesome job. We love our video, but yeah, but please send us a user testimonial so other people can learn from your, your experience and make a video even greater. Yeah. And also, the infrastructure, one of the big topics upstream for this, uh, for this cycle has been all the migration uh, for the background tools we use uh, for our CI testing to so Sylvie 3 and a new version of Notebook. So we in the RDO community are also uh, building tools based on uh, on Sylvie 3 and not Sylvie 3. We have a, a kind of integrated suite called uh, Super Factory, which is what we use to we use as a basis for for all the RDO building. And, and this is a great opportunity for us, but also to contribute to the Sylvie 3 project upstream, which we are doing already, but also to to spread love for for this project because Sylvie 3 is, is really great and it's really helping us. And, and now, the, one of the things we will do in the background during this cycle will, will be to extend uh, Sylvie 3 usage internally inside RDO, Triple O, CI as well. So we'll make sure that everything is working as expected and, and we get a better platform for, for CI. Thank you very much. And good luck in the, in the coming cycle with RDF. Thank you, Rich. Thank you very much.